So while it is the case that um, using this type of configuration will allow any origin, more than likely that's not what you're going to want to do. Um, in fact, we are going to want to specify the specific origins that we'd like to allow. And this of course depends on what host you'll be running your front-end application on or any client application to this particular API. So in our case, when we build out the view app, more than likely we are going to be running on HTTP localhost port 8080. If that changes, or if it's different in your case, if you follow along with this series, then just be sure to update the port if you're running on localhost or if your app is uh, deployed somewhere that the particular domain from which requests are being made is placed into our with origins uh, extension method here. Now the other thing that I noticed is that the order of uh, what's called here does seem to matter, at least uh, the last time that I tried this. And so this only really seemed to work um, if I placed use cores between use routing and, um, or I should say, before after use routing and before app that use authorization and use endpoints. Next, in order to apply that rule globally, what we're going to do is at the top of our configure services method is say app.add cores. And I'm just going to place that at the very top of our configure services method. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cd into the web project. And I'm going to run .NET build. Everything seems to be building here. And let's run .NET run. So we're running once again on port 5000. And the next thing that I'd like to demonstrate is how we can actually make requests to our API using a tool called Postman. So if you're not familiar with it, Postman is essentially an IDE for interacting with web APIs. And essentially what it allows you to do is to create various collections. I'm going to go ahead and, and um, remove some things that I'm not using at the moment. Um, but we can create these collections of requests and we specify the um, HTTP and we specify the type of HTTP request as well as any content that we're actually sending as a payload. Um, it's a free tool, so if you're interested, go ahead and download Postman. It makes testing APIs um, quite a bit easier than it would otherwise. So for instance, we don't actually need a front-end developed to do things like make post requests to our application, and it prevents us from needing to use uh, command line tools like curl, for instance, to um, make requests to our API as well. So I'm going to make a new collection here. We're going to call this one Good Books. And into this uh, directory, I'm going to add a request. So I'm going to call it Get All Books. We're going to save to Good Books. And then we can edit the request here. So it is going to be a get request. We're going to go to localhost 5000 slash API slash books. If we send that request, you can see we get back our string books exclamation mark which is exactly what we had specified in the controller. Now that we have a way to test this, um, not only from the browser, but also from um, Postman, and I'll note that you can also see all the various HTTP verbs that we have here um, in general when we're developing simple REST APIs. We're most of the time concerned with um, verbs get, post, put, patch, and delete, and sometimes head and options. I would say that the other verbs, while uh, definitely used, they're going to be used much less common than these uh, standard uh, verbs that you find here towards the top. All right, so we have this get request wired up. Let's go ahead and head back into our application. And in our controller, in the books controller, rather than return books here, we're going to inject an instance of our book service. So we, again, just need to specify that we're requesting something that behaves like a book service. It's going to be a read only my book service. We're going to call it book service. And then the constructor again with, and then the constructor here will take an iBook service and set that value to the backing field here. Again, this is a controller and it's the framework's job to set that up. And so nowhere in our app are we actually newing up a controller. Um, likewise, nowhere in our, in our app are we newing up a book service. The dependency injection framework built in with .NET Core is going to take care of mapping any time it finds or any time it sees a request for um, an iBook service while constructing an object is going to 
inject an instance of the book service that we um, said it should map to. And again, that mapping is taken care of in our startup.cs. You can see we're adding scoped instances of book services um, anytime we request iBook service. And here, actually, I think I'm going to make this a transient. Shouldn't make too much of a difference in our case. But we'll come back here, and rather than return OK Books, what we can do is we can say, Hey, book service, get all books. Again, I mentioned previously that it's not really best practice to return the data model to your view. We should actually map that to a view model. But to get something initial wired up here, we are going to just directly pass that data model to the view, and we can do that with an OK response, and we'll pass books on it. You can imagine that you might have other logic in your controller here to check whether or not you got any books back, and if you didn't, uh, maybe rather than send null or an empty list back, you could send back some type of service response with a message, and that's something that I also cover in greater detail in my in-depth series on uh, .NET Core. Okay, let's go back to the terminal. I'm going to stop and then run .NET build again and .NET run. If you want, you could also put this in your makefile, although we're not really saving much time here with a .NET command. All right, so let's head back here and let's make a new get request. And this time we're getting back an empty list. And that is because we don't actually have any books in the system. And so it's the uh, default behavior of our service here to return an empty array of books. So how might we get books in the system? Well, if we take a look at what we'd started on our book service, we have an implementation for adding a book as well. So if we head over to the actual book service, we implement the add book method, which adds a new instance of a book to our um, database and then calls save changes. So what's on a book? Well, it's a very simple model. We have an ID, which um, the framework will actually take care of auto-generating and auto-incrementing ID here when it sees an int um, with a property name ID. We've got a created on, updated on time, a title, and an author. So let's go back to our controller and make a post method. So what I'm going to do is instead of HTTP get, we're going to post. When we post to the same endpoint, we can have the same endpoint here with different verbs. So we're going to make a method called create new book. And maybe you just create book. And we're going to call on our service to add a book. And I'm going to put a method in here to say that a book was created. So here we go. We can create a new book object. I'm going to set the uh, date times on this object to uh, daytime UTC now. The title of the book will be some um, book title. So we're going to say book request dot title. And the author will be the book request dot author. And how are we going to get this book request? Well, it's got to come in on uh, the payload of this HTTP POST request. And so we have an attribute for that we can use. It's called from body. And I'm going to make it a new book request type. And what I'm going to do inside of the web project is create a new directory called request models. And then within this directory, I'm going to create a new book request. This is going to be a super simple class that has a string title and an author. So anytime we make a new book request, we're just going to provide a title and an author for our simple use case. We can make sure that we bring in the appropriate um, namespace here. And we use that request model to essentially uh, reserialize it, if you will, to a to a book data model object. So we take the properties off of that book request and we attach them directly to this new instance of a book data model. 
then we add that uh, to the database via the service, which has the add book method on it. So we're not actually dealing with the database in the what would be essentially the view layer here, uh, view as in MVC. Um, so in the uh, front end of our application layer, and again, as I've mentioned a few times now, really we, we would be dealing uh, the entire time here with uh, view models and maybe taking a book request, serializing that into a book view model, passing that to the service, and then the service would essentially know how to do the mapping from any view model in its, in its system to um, the data model. But in the effort of, again, just kind of keeping things simple and taking a look at how the framework uh, works in general, we're going to be dealing with the same data model throughout each layer of our application layer. Okay, so now that we have this, let's go ahead and um, stop, and then I'll run .NET build and .NET run again. Everything looks good, so let's head back into Postman, and what I'm going to do is make a new request. going to be add book. Instead of a get request, it's going to be a post request. We're going to use the same endpoint as we did when we got all books, except that, of course, this is a, a post request now. And then on the body, let's take a look at using raw data or text uh, and then um, I should say JSON uh, formatted. This is going to give us uh, some syntax highlighting here. So we're going to post this JSON object which essentially will have a title, which let's call the title Thinking in Systems, which is a famous book by the author Danella H. Meadows. I'm not exactly sure, I think it's like this. Okay, so let's try and see what happens when we make this post request to our new endpoint. Interesting, so now we get back this note that the book was created, Thinking in Systems, so that's looking good. And then if I head back to um, get all books, and it's interesting that the uh, collection doesn't update the icon here, we just made a post request as you can see. But when we call get all books again, we actually see that um, we're getting that book we created back from our API. So this is one of the reasons why it's um, really useful to have Postman in your uh, sort of box of tools when you're doing API development. This makes it really easy to kind of test out um, and work with APIs as you're building them uh, via this interface. Okay, I'm going to save this. That updates the post icon over here. That's good. I'll save both of them just to be sure. And so let's create uh, a few more books here. Robert C. Martin, aka Uncle Bob. We're going to go ahead and make a post request here for this book. You can see that uh, we get this success response back. And let's add another book here. Broadband, a book by Claire L. Evans, a really good read. Go ahead and send that. And then if we go back to get all books and make that get request again, we can see that we have new books in our system that we can actually get with this get request. Now keep in mind, as I mentioned um, a little bit earlier when we set up this get request, this is returning every book in our system. It's doing that within the scope of a single HTTP request and so it's not going to scale as the number of books in our system grows. There's rarely a case where we're going to want to query for, say, a million books. Um, often the way that that's handled, as I've mentioned previously, is that we'd set up some type of backend pagination here. Um, and we'd work on having things like uh, query string parameters here where we might have books with um, like a page number or a page size, and you can see that the query parameters are going to be parsed by Postman here. Um, and maybe we have like page one and limit like 20 or something like that, and then like items per page. We'd have to actually set all of this up um, manually in our controller methods, and we'd specify exactly how to extract that information from the query string. Again, something that's outside of the scope of this uh, brief tutorial, but something I do cover in uh, much greater detail in my in-depth course on um, .NET Core. Okay, so let's go ahead and just get rid of these and save. 